I'm Pioneer Field Agronomist Zach Forey. I'm out here in a soybean field and these soybeans in this field today are in about the R2 stage. So R2 is when we've got full flowering. At the top of the plant we've got flowers. We're beginning to get pod development on this plant. We've got some larger pods forming down at the bottom. But uh, on the top, when we start to get some pod formation at the top, pods that are 3 16 of an inch longer or longer, then we'll move into the R3 stage. So we're pretty close to the R3 stage right now. So one of the questions that I get pretty commonly on soybeans that are beginning to flower is, is what about white mold uh, and in particular about fungicide use to manage white mold. Well what, what happens here, understanding the mechanism of infection is really important. So you can see on this plant we've got flowers and when these flowers are pollinated the petals will drop off. Those petals fall into the axles of these leaves and they, they, they rot and decay. About the same time you've got sclerotia in the soil that are germinating and letting spores off into the air. And when those spores land in these leaf axles where the petal material is decaying, that's where those spores will germinate and grow and infect those soybean plants. And so you have to have all these things happening at one time. Flowers that are decaying, falling, falling in the axles of the leaves, germinating and emerging sclerotia and spores. And then the moisture it is in that canopy, the moisture it is in those leaf axles, the more likely it is that you're going to get infection. And so when you understand that, it's a little bit easier to understand why it's so hard to control white mold in soybeans with a fungicide application. The basic problem here is that soybeans flower for a long period of time, typically around a month. And so those flowers are flowering, the petals are falling off, they're falling leaf axles and decaying. The fungicides only work primarily as a preventative. They have to get on there really timely in a way that uh, they can prevent those fungi from infecting in the first place. And so the critical issue with soybeans and white mold control is that the timing of a fungicide application is so critical and it's so difficult. And so the typical timing for white mold control might be R1. So we're past R1 right now. R1 would be when we've got first flowers forming. But the problem again is that you've got flowering for another month of time after that. So oftentimes if you're going to get an effective uh, control of white mold, you're going to need at least two applications. So you might going to go at, at something like R1 and then at R3. So in our part of the world, we get, uh, we get some white mold, but we don't usually get full fields infected every year. And so a fungicide application, because of the cost and the difficulty of timing, and also the uncertainty about whether we're going to get any white mold or not, make it really difficult to, uh, to spend the money to uh, treat for white mold with a fungicide application. There are some conditions that it does certainly make sense. So in very high yield uh, irrigated conditions, for example, might be a, a place where we would plan to do a two fungicide application on soybeans, particularly if we have a history of white mold. That's such a big factor with white mold, how much pressure is out there, how many sclerotia are already in the soil. Other places, even non-irrigated, where we might think about a, 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 a fungicide or two fungicide application would be in a very high risk environment. So that would be places where we've had a real history of severe white mold and those are typically uh, protected areas, areas that are very fertile where we get really lush growth and uh, those canopies get dense, plants get tall and they stay moist underneath that canopy uh, and, and we've got a white mold history there. That would be another place where we might consider a fungicide application for management of white mold. Another question I get very commonly on soybeans this time of year, this time and as we go later in the year, is really about leaf spots and leaf diseases and what's going on. And so it's really common this year and, and in many years to have several diseases. So this would be septoria leaf spot. Septoria is very, very common. It's a fungal disease. We, particularly later in the year, we'll see it lower in the canopy when those leaves are getting less sunlight and they begin to senesce. They become really susceptible and we get a lot of septoria leaf spot in those leaves and they drop off. It's uh, I've never seen it to become an economic problem. Uh, it is something that fungus, it's a fungi, so fungicides could work on it, but it isn't something that's causing yield loss, but it is very evident uh, and common in fields. The other thing that we'll get a lot of questions on and we'll see very commonly is bacterial uh, leaf blight. And so bacterial leaf blight, when you see these tattered leaves and some brown areas and some yellow haloed areas around that, uh, that's usually bacterial leaf blight. 
And of course, fungi, fungicides don't work on bacteria in any case, but this is also um, really uh, an aesthetic problem. They look bad, but it really uh, is unlikely to be causing any yield effects. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.